Hello everybody all over the world. Hello, I am IGPS and today uh, we do the show episode 63 or something where we are going to look at sniper angles. And what's a sniper angle, you might ask? Well, that is the angle of which you're aiming. Uh, this is going to be the focus of today's episode. And sorry for being late, but um, university crap like that, taking up a lot of time. Also, uh, nearly broke my back uh, doing some exercises yesterday. It was very heavy and my back hurts like a... But that's fine, because we're here today and everything is going to be fine. And um, some people m mentioned in the comments uh, later that I should not show myself as much and not use soundboard uh, as much. And that gave me an idea. Show myself more and use the soundboard more. Yes. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, mention something else. That I have a Twitter where I post uh, comments and stuff about anything. And then I have a Steam group called High GPS, and that group has all kinds of announcements and topics and stuff for you to send in to me and stuff. And next week is going to be a spy episode, and I'll post in the Steam group. I also mentioned at the end of this video uh, what the topic is going to be. So stay tuned to that, follow that, and you'll get all kinds of announcements. You won't be spammed or anything because I don't post a lot of useless stuff there. So without further ado, let's go into the first replay of the day, which is submitted by the user named Alfarius. And he has submitted before, and he's going to be a sniper, and he's going to be using Gerardi frying pan, which is the same as a kukri, because obviously a pan is as good as a knife. This is going to be here on Gord's on offense. He's going to be on blue. And he takes his first sniper position here, takes his time, angles it, and shoots correctly. And that's also something we're going to be talking about today, and that is a lot of snipers, uh, when you're a new sniper, you kind of take your time, you want to align your shots, you want to make them hit, you know? And then when you, like, kind of become better, you think, like, I have to shoot faster in order to hit. And that's necessarily the case, because if you just focus on landing your shots, like, taking your time, you will automatically get faster by yourself. And the thing is, if you shoot fast and don't hit nothing, you're not a very good sniper. You're you're supposed to take your time and take down key, you know, targets like heavies, medics, engineers, and so on. So that's important to note. So he takes down another sniper here, sniper versus sniper. Very interesting here. So we ha he has this angle right here. He can only be shot from there, and there's no sniper there, no sniper here. So he's actually in a pretty good shape right now. So we're just going to be looking at different angles uh, through today's episode. He's a demo man. Takes his time. Headshots him. Nice shot there. He sees another sniper up there and hasn't been spotted yet. All right, so this, he actually, you know, he was here. He could have just re-scoped and um, shot again, but that would leave him vulnerable here. Because keep in mind, when you snipe, you become tunnel visioned and you can't see what's over here. So if he, let's say he would have been standing here and he would have scoped, if there would be a sniper here, which there isn't, he could easily just run out and shoot you and you would have died. So he does the wise thing and actually goes behind this rock here, taking cover and then landing a few shots. Um, don't miss, but he's strafing back and forth. Landing a body shot on the sniper, it's not so important. He takes him out. And uh, let's just go in. Um, I just want to check for a little bit how it looked for the other sniper that was aiming at him from the other side. Because keep in mind, a sniper is very like mind game ish class. Because if a sniper headshots you a lot of time, you're going to be careful. And you're going to be like, oh my god, it's a fucking sniper. All right, so you have the red team, only one sniper alive. Look at this is this guy, he's the enemy. This is what he sees. He tries to hit him, can't really do that. And can't hit him again. And he tries again, and then he goes down. So that's all he saw. So here we have Alfarius. And uh, they actually have a good defense here, but the engineer's being a bit dumb and he doesn't really notice them. And, oh, nice angle there, very nice. However, uh, your head peeks up and you can usually get shot, but however, it's nice. You can just duck if you don't want to get shot, so that's fine. He's gonna shoot the medic. Oh, he sees the engineer and the engineer's super vulnerable and he takes him out as well. Nice job there. And then he's just gonna shoot on the sentry, because keep in mind the sentry gun dies if you just keep shooting at it without an engineer repairing it. So he's going all hero up in this bitch, just take him down, everything. Oh, there's a sniper, yes, nice little twitch there. That is something you will get eventually by playing. Don't worry too much about that. So he's uh, now on the side here, doing a little bit of flank sniping. Uh, not overextending, he's being very careful. 
Uh, keep in mind as a sniper you want to stay at the back for the most part and be safe and let your team go in front of you and then stand in the back and shoot everything key targets as they move in. I know there's a sentry gun there. Didn't really see it because the sniper rifle was in the way, but he caught it. And keep in mind, uh, this is what Alfaria sees. He doesn't see what's outside of this circle right here. I don't know why in replays, but for some reason you can see everything. But he just has this tunnel vision here, so anything outside this circle, he cannot see. So he takes out uh, that uh, sentry gun, sees a medic, and keep in mind the pan is super effective. Finish him. And the medic goes down. Nice job there. Pan counters everything, as you know. Yes, so he's gonna be running around about and uh, seeing another dispenser. He has a team that has three engineers on offense. So when you're attacking, you don't need three engineers, you only need one. Sometimes you don't even need one. So that's why his push is being a bit uh, slow. He's taking out the key elements, uh, taking out medics, taking out engineers and other snipers. And yet his team is just uh, uh, back in the phase and just having a little bit of trouble. Um, Advancing forward. And he sees another sniper, takes him out as well. I'm gonna go over the sniper mechanic a bit later in the show, especially how sniper versus sniper works, just the very basics of it. Because uh, that's interesting, but really it's not interesting at all. So he's thrown Jurati, keep in mind Jurati and SMG are about just as good, they just work very differently. It's all depending on the style you wish to play. This is a medic, he's running around all by himself. He's an, the enemy team has a lot of support classes, but as you can see, they only have like two demo men, and the rest is just support and a couple of engineers. So, um, but then on offense, his team isn't that good either, so I guess they're equally as awful. So we see all furries here. Oh, he's gonna get his Girati back. Somehow got a new bottle and peed in it already. Throws it at the demo man and just holds his pan for some reason. You could have just no scope body shot him, that's a pretty good alternative. Demo man runs away. Gonna be running around here. And uh, he's gonna go and see if he can get some good angles here. And usually what's a good angle is if the opponent is right in front of you. Shooting down like this is very hard. Mainly due to the fact uh, of uh, how the angles work. And we'll go over that a bit later. So he just goes in here and he actually uses strategy which is called looking through the fucking windows. Doesn't hurt to just look. Keep in mind you can just look somewhere and see if there's anyone there or if there's not anything one there you don't have to run out and attack and rush everything as a sniper because you're a sniper oh whoops yes there we are she's gonna be peek here uh gonna look around oh he sees a devil man can't uh, do the shot and he sees a laggiest sniper ever and he takes him out as well and he misses the demo man again but that's fine and he jumps down and he's on the point all by himself he has jurati he is super ready for any kind of action coming on, but everybody seems to ignore that he's on the point. And... Then they win. Yay. That was so hard. So he did it pretty well, go like 11 kills, destroyed a bunch of stuff as a sniper. And stuff like that. So, uh, we saw it sent, and this was an intro about, you know, sniping, taking your position. I just saw Alfaris had pretty good positioning, pretty good angles. Because, um... You, you really want to be able to get those important shots and not, you know, uh, mess up and everything. So uh, we're going to look at one where that happens, where you, you know, screw up a bit. So he, that was on defense, currently set up time, he's on the red team. And I can just tell you right now, uh, on this map there's several places where you can snipe. You can, like one angle is here. Because generally when you snipe you want to have, uh, give your opponents as little room to move as possible in any direction. So here is good because they can only really move side to side. However, if you stand on top here, they can like move, when they move forward and back, they will actually go up and down in your scope. So that's not very good. All right, so we just had a little crash, but that's fine. All right, so um, you don't want them to, you know, move, like I just, just said, up and down in your scope and you have another sniper angle here. We can stand and shoot through here. You only have like a little angle. They can move up and down, but it's not as much as the other place. And you also have one here. It's not as good. And then you have like through here. Uh, also very good. Don't give them, you know, a lot of options because in the scope you will be like this. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to hit anything inside the square. And this is a good angle because you want to give your... Like I, I'm going to be saying this entire freaking episode is... Uh, about this much area of space is completely good. It's really, really good to, you know, have as a sniper angle. 
And you can also do it up here. Oh, here, up here it's a good sniper uh, place as well, but it's a bit harder because it's wider and you can easily get counter sniped. So we're gonna see him, uh, Alfarius here, uh, actually do that. So he actually has his weapon right here and he's strafing back and forth. And the reason I don't have this weapon is because the weapon will actually block you from seeing anything on the other side. So he just goes here and it's like, okay, I'm just gonna look over here and okay, I can see this much. All right, good. Gates are about to open. We're about to kill this stuff. He's an engineer. They have like a three century. They have a lot of engineers on offense for some reason. Three. <laughs> Mission begins it's a magic number seconds. of engineers you need. Hey, hey, you guys know what this is? This is a sentry gun. Five, four, and then he moves it. Three, it's like, all right, just gonna cover this one. door. And then the door's open, and he immediately dies because, uh, in case you haven't noticed, there's snipers here. And you're like, well, how did he not see them? And I'm just going to show you really quick why he didn't see them. And that, my ladies and gentlemen, is because I have to um, go back a bit and it takes a bit of time because the replay editor is kind of dumb when it comes to uh, rewinding over extended periods of time for the purpose of educating you. Ha. So I've um, rebounded about um, 30 sec, 40 seconds now. Uh, so let's see. Yes, here he is. Good. So as you can see, his rifle is actually blocking this door right here. So if he'd done like me, like this, he wouldn't have seen this down here. But because of the rifle, he doesn't see it. So, uh, yeah. And he says he has his view model off too, but I'm trying to make a point here. You need to don't ruin everything. But yeah, that's one example of why having a view models can sometimes obstruct your view. That's why I turned it off, but you can have it on if you want. But you just have to be careful. You just have to look around more if you don't. Uh, that's the point I wanted to make that. So the thing about sniper, if you stay in your scope, stay in tunnel vision, and you don't have secure flanks, enemy snipers will just kill you like super easily. So let's move on to a uh, replace that I did because that was uh, the only user submitted we got this time because apparently everybody hates snipers. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be on Payload Thunder Mountain. It's going to be Payload Thunder Mountain, King Lil Viaduct, and Payload Badwater uh, for the rest of uh, this episode. It's going to be focusing on those three maps. So here we are uh, using the sniper rifle. Uh, we have the view model turned off, of course. And we're just taking our time, right? So there's the thing. Already now, this heavy is trapped behind these rocks. Like he can't go anywhere until we like we will see him wherever he goes, unless he like suicides. And keep in mind, heavies have the largest hitbox in the game. They also have the largest heads, and they're the slowest class, and they're really easy because snipers are really really good against heavies because that's how the game balance works. So he won't be able to go anywhere without us noticing, but we're just gonna be okay. We're just gonna try the sniper. I right, got the sniper. He hasn't seen us yet, I think. And oh yes, we get a nice quick scope on him there. Not really much as angling, and this is what I mean by standing on top. Do you see how hard it is? Because they can move up, like forward and back, and left and right, and it will be like in four dimensions for my part. However, if I was like below on the ground, like here, uh, if they move back and forth, uh, or forward or uh, from side to side or back and forth it doesn't really matter because they will still be just on one level it's the power of 3d so we get a medic here and hit a demo man and this guy goes down and something like that good all right so oh, is this soldier jumping down all right cool uh, still being on top of here as a sniper not really being at a good angle here because you're really open because at any point in time you come in here's the sniper duel how it works basically whoever scopes first dies first it's a general idea so we got a kill on a pirate here to save them and this is what it looks like on my end, and then he goes down because he scoped first, and then he loses speed, and then he died. Yes. So we're gonna be running back and forth there, trying to get a good angle. We were right, okay, didn't have the best angle, so we're gonna go back here, and this is a good angle here because uh, we can only we can only shoot through here, but we can only get shot back through here uh, in case if anyone just comes up here at any point in time and just rolls us back into our spawn. This is also a good angle, you know, you kind of limit the options the enemy has to move, their mobility, and it makes it easier to shoot. 
very important to bear that in mind when you be, uh, want to be doing well as a sniper, because you can't just run out, like, guns blazing and try to kill everything. That's what a heavy does. Oh, oh trying to get a sniper. Can't really do it. Throw Jurati. Fall back. I'm going to try and work on another angle. Now we have a very good angle here. You see? Small amount of space. It's flat. If they move forward or back from side to side, it doesn't matter. It's just, uh, like, two-dimensional for now. Because I'm not above them, I'm on the same level, and that's the easiest way to snipe. And you see, now I even limited the space more into this tiny square. So even though if, like, let's say a sniper comes out, right? He runs out. Here. He comes running out. He only has this amount of area to kill me on. So that means it will be a lot harder for him to scope and shoot me than for me to just body shot him uh, immediately. And you can see even, like, minimize... You can minimize uh, the amount of space even more. So we see a spy and we shoot him, but it doesn't register for some reason. And we just hit him with a knife, but he's a dead ringer and he escapes because it's a spy. And spies tend to do that. And then a soldier comes to shoot lasers at us, and uh, then we die. So, uh, just by moving correctly and positioning yourself, you can uh, limit the amount of space you give your opponents to move. Uh, making it easier for you to shoot them and then harder f to shoot you and that's exactly what you want to do uh, But this was on defense. So let's look on the first stage of payload Thunder Mountain on attack as a sniper And we're gonna be uh, doing something that is very standard very stable uh, I don't do it as much anymore, but it's good for starting if you want to start off as a sniper and do uh, really well I froze I think What? Alright, the sound is still going, I think. Alright, cut! Alright, the frozenness is over, I think. So, uh, that's good. So, yeah, uh, basically scoping first and being very careful when you go out. So we're gonna look at here on attack as a sniper. So we're going to be scoping here, and keep in mind we only see this little dot here, we don't see what's on the sides. So we're just going to be looking around here. Oh, see a sniper, body shot him, he's using the Darwin Danger Shield for some reason. And he's really low on health right now, we just run back and forth. You see another sniper, he's running back and forth too, but keep in mind, when the two snipers are just looking at each other and they're both just strafing back and forth like this, Basically, they're like equalizing each other out and nothing is happening. So at any point in time, uh, any other class interfering with this will settle the duel. So if you have a competent team, you're going to win every single time. A soldier here shooting the lasers. As we know, they are quite good against nothing. Because a regular rocket launcher or any rocket launcher is better than that laser thing. So we get a body shot on the pyro. You know, only getting the headshots when we really need to. You can body shot. As long as you get the kill, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter how you do it. As long as it doesn't, you know, suck. So there we go, just standing for there back in the base. Kind of staying in the back. Working this little angle here. And uh, we don't see anything. Oh, there's a spy maybe. Oh, you see a sniper. Uh, missing barely. And he ran down there. He's going to probably come up anytime soon. We have a couple of spies. We have a bunch of other guys there. Alright, good. So, we're gonna push the cart now and- Oh, we saw a spy. And we got the spy. And I'm gonna sh and then we're just gonna be pushing the cart here. And keep in mind, peeking uh, up here can be very dangerous because enemy snipers... Um, which is not present. They could actually just be peeking, standing in the back there, scoping, and they will actually, like, have their crosshair, like, right above here. So, they will have, like, a really small, like, square where you can be, and you will die really, really, really easily. Just gotta be careful about that. Getting a nice quick scope on the pyro there. Just keep in mind, only shoot when you think you're gonna hit. Don't shoot, you know, just to shoot. Shoot to kill. And, oh, what happened there? What? 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 I like this. This is this has only happened once, and I played sniper for over a thousand hours now. Okay, so uh. Okay, join with me on this. I'm, I'm standing on the left side of the cart, scoping, and then suddenly... Boop, I'm on top of the cart. All right, good, good. Now we know that. So we're gonna try and get this other sniper here, but it's hard to shoot moving targets, as you might have known. But, uh, yeah. 
we get a nice headshot on him because uh, he was inside like our little square where uh, we can kill him. So let's try and look at that again in slow motion because we can. Cool. Because sometimes when people move, they are kind of predictable. And uh, Team Fortress 2 crashed this time, thankfully not uh, XSplit. Um, which is good. I mean, obviously, I've been streaming, you know, uh, now and then every week and been recording and stuff, and everything's worked fine, but today we have a show, it's been post like twice, and then every, that, that Steam's like, no, 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 don't, don't want to work. Don't want to work. Let's, all right, so I'm just going to fast forward this, because you guys already seen this. Already loading back in, because this is really fucking dumb. By Steam. Like somebody, like Elfarius said, stability is overrated. We want stuff to be as unstable as possible, Valve, for making the replay system so good and not messy. All right. So I'm just going to fast forward here. You can look at the fast forward. This is really interesting. You've already seen this. Scoping around. Do, 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 shooting, shooting. Just looking through a scope. All right. Catching the spy. Fancy stuff here. Yes. Okay. This is about where we were. Okay. So here we have this little square here, which I talked about. And slow motion. And you just move over and he dies before he shoots because that's how the demos work apparently. But yeah, just just because he was inside like our comfortable square, uh, we could kill him very easily. However, if he would have been outside of the square of where you're like comfortable of uh, moving at, uh, you know, inside the square, he would most likely have killed you. So that was just uh, lucky on my behalf that he actually, you know, stopped strafing inside the uh, square and scoped uh, the way he did. Uh, if he'd done it anyway differently, I most likely would have died or getting a headshot if I had overheals and whatnot. So we're going to be pushing the cart here with the rest of the team, trying to do some damage. But then a spy stabs us, because that happens when you're a sniper. You get killed by spies a lot, and a Razorback will not save you ever. Well, maybe once or twice, but you want you know want to help your team. SMG or Jurati, that's the way to go. Anything else is unacceptable. So, uh, the thing about when you're being on uh, offense is that you have to be wary of other snipers. Because the thing is, if you if you scope first and you slowly move, you move very slowly. And as you know, shooting slow moving targets is pretty easy to shoot. So, uh, you always have to be a little bit careful about other snipers, uh, which I mentioned earlier. And the thing you want to do is, whoops, uh, is to strafe back and forth and wait for them to scope and then shoot them or just avoid them it's up to you so what i mean by there and oh you spot this all right here's the thing if you see a wall with a red dot or blue dot depending like a, t a dot that's not your team it means the sniper's watching right so we're gonna, we're gonna have and oh there's a sniper there can you see there's a sniper there and a sniper there and that's a two-on-one situation right there i have a spy buddy right here but uh, let's not pay attention to him just yet Okay, so we're just trying to shoot that guy. We miss, take him out as we strafe back and forth. And uh, we land a body shot on him. And that's a sniper actually get taken out. But that's pretty smart, you know? He actually used the stairs to move back and forth to be a bit more unpredictable. Because it's harder to move your, uh, like, uh, your little red, like, your little dot here diagonally than just vertically, horizontally or vertically, like this. Well, you can see the mouse because it's crashed, but what I mean is like he moved up and down here uh, on the side and uh, being unpredictable that way because you have to like move your mouse two axis, but here's just uh, X axis and the Y axis or something like that. Yes, good. So we uh, both snipers are down and oh, it's a demo man taking him out with a headshot. Uh, little twitch there that comes with just experience and you get experience by playing sniper and a demo man comes down and throws right at him. But Pyro comes and everybody the kid dies, right? The sniper's back and we miss. And oh, the sniper's back too. You can't chew through that barbed wire because... Because. And he scopes first, makes the mistake. We just scope and shoot and get the kill. However, uh, if you're not comfortable with your aim and you don't, you know, where have worked out the kinks into your aim, uh, even if he scopes first, if your aim is not, you know, as, like, at least as good as he is, he's probably going to kill you first in the lower levels of sniping. But don't worry too much about that. That's just the gist of it. So we're still going to push the cart because as a sniper, you can do that. You don't have to stand, you know, somewhere else and just shoot. You have to be, you know, 
important. And we're going to look at that in uh, probably the next replay. We're going to look at why moving around a sniper is very good because we go down to a demo man and a medic. Because keep in mind, snipers are weak as shit up close. Uh, I'd say probably one of the most efficient and secure way to kill a sniper if for any class. Let's say the sniper has like god aim, you know, he's like really good, shoots everything, he's like almost like, you know, a hacker. Uh, the best way is to just go soldier and jump on him and just kill him because it takes two rockets. So you have one rocket to jump. That means you have three left, right? So that means you have three left. Yes. And then two rockets to kill him. And then you have one rocket in case you miss one of the shots. So that's pretty good. So we're going to be here on Viaduct. And this is a like standard, standard sniper position here because, you know, you're far in the back. You are on the high ground takes a bit of effort to get to you and uh, it's flat even though they move like slightly up and down it's not as much as if you were like aiming like right down on them so we're just gonna scope first see a scout take him out scouts have 125 health the body shot is about 150 damage spread on so we get another spy here just standing in the back charging up our shots standing in the back here and then just looking around keep in mind don't stay in the scope for too long if nothing's happening you should you know check your back for spies uh, however, you don't have to be as careful if you haven't been backstabbed in a game as if you're getting backstabbed constantly. Uh, that's one thing uh, to note that uh, even as a sniper, at any point in time I could have died to a, to a spy, but I haven't yet. Even though the enemy team doesn't, they have a sniper, but he hasn't, no, uh, he has a sniper and a spy, but they haven't been able to do anything just yet. And as you can see, uh, right now, absolutely nothing is happening. And I can see, like, my teammates, they're, like, not even in the point, there's nothing happening. And here's the thing about, you know, what like uh, the difference goes between bad snipers and good snipers? Good snipers knows that something's up, and since nothing's happening, all right, I guess we can move forward because there's no reason standing here looking at the wall. So let's move forward uh, a bit. Even though the enemy team is horrible, this is just an example of it. So right now, um, you can I can guess you can say the choke has been pushed back here because every the red team is here at their spawn for some reason. And they have an awful composition, mostly engineers and spies. We have another sniper here, just a little duel here, but he doesn't scope. And then we just, he, I think he escapes. Yeah, he escapes. I'm not able to kill him. Here comes a soldier, and now stuff is happening. We move forward to see where the action's at. At least some of it. And uh, this spot is actually not that bad, because uh, slightly forward you will be shielded, and they can only come from the back. And your team actually has to secure the point from the back, so this sentry would actually start shooting anything that would go for me so i know that so i'm using the sentry as a spotter you know through the power of teamwork and knowing the game you will become really good so if at any point in time this sentry here would start shooting i would just unscope and turn around and check my back engineer comes and plunks down a mini sentry gun that gets immediately obliterated and now oh we see people's up there they shoot up oh, scouts dies we see the bird taking out a soldier jumping avoid taking out a scout as well seeing an engineer can't really hit him but the other engineer is standing still behind a sentry gun and pondering about physics or something and then he goes down as well and keep in mind just shoot at sentry guns and they will die when they're not being repaired by an engineer so so far are we doing pretty good soldier dumps out just take our time align the shot kill him because there's not a lot he can do when we have teammates in front of us another soldier comes take him, him out as well as a, as a full charge, you can kill every single class in the game with a full charge, even though if they're healed or not, except the heavy hold being overhealed and using the uh, fists of steel, but that's like the only thing. And I now need some health. Uh, you can't see because Valve thinks it's dumb to have like you know any kind of information available in uh, replays. So we're just going to be standing here, changing our spot a bit. We haven't been standing in the same spot for too long. And oh, we see a heavy. And heavies are easy to shoot. Take him out. Yes, good. S dispenser's almost up. Let me just stand around here. Healing. It's pretty solid play. Very uh, safe and standard, especially when the enemy team is two players less than you and just a bunch of horrible classes with no team work whatsoever. And they're all running around like chickens. Getting a lucky shot at the engineer there. He's actually trying to hit the pyro. Hit the engineer instead. It's like sometimes you get like lucky snipes where you hit something that you didn't aim for. You're gonna look at that a prime example where I am the victim a bit, la a bit later. So you see a heavy, you take him out as well because he's even when running he's slow and when he's spun he's like a snail, really easy to shoot. And this engineer just not want to do anything and then we win. Good, yeah, that was fun, right? Right? No? Ah, that was pretty dumb. I agree. It's pretty dumb. 
So our next replay is actually on Bad Badwater. So we've seen like the importance of changing positions because we've seen a lot of snipers. They just stand in one spot, even on attack, and even if there's no enemies, there's nothing going on where they are. The choke where stuff is happening is moved forward like through half the map and they still stand there because, you know. So just keep thinking like if you stand in a spot for too long and nothing happens, you can probably just move up. Won't hurt. If you die, you know you reach the choke. That's a good uh, good thing here. So I'm going to show you a, a cool spot where you can snipe. You can jump up here by ducking and then jumping and then jumping again and stuff. And you can jump up here. And what I, the reason I'm just standing here is that I don't want the enemy team to know that I'm standing here. So I'm just taking my time being patient. And that's important, as I noted with um, earlier, that patience is very important. Take your time, align the shots. Having a bit of a ducking competition here with the other spy over there. And then we're going to charging up the shot here, and we're going to shoot through this little ledge on the left here. And we actually have a little, you know, little square where we can shoot through. And we see a medic take him out barely, barely hitting him. And we can around, see if we can get another kill. Yes, get a nice black shot on the demo. We had a full charge, spent four seconds charging up, being able to do 155, 150 damage. Why should I bother doing 450 when he dies in just one body shot? And I'm gonna stand on top here. Very risky, but the enemy team doesn't have a sniper that's all alive. They have a guy named Big Homer. He's a, a decent sniper. Gave me uh, a bit harder run of the money that I had earlier collecting this replay. So Spy escaped because I'm awful at throwing Girati. And we have an engineer here that has really good uh, sentry placement. What's this called? Sentry. What is this called? Sentry. And this. Tell the spentry. Summer Whoops. Alright. So he actually has played a Highlander. This is like the Highlander setup for uh, Engineer here. Pretty standard stuff right there. So we're just gonna run around on top of here. See if we can get anything done. And here's a, like, we've seen a good angle, and this is an example of bad angle, right? See, like, I'm like super on top of everything. Oh my god. And this is gonna be so hard to hit because they can move in literally every direction. And even hitting this heavy is gonna be hard. He goes into that spy. Just look how hard it is to hit this stuff. Oh my god. He's gonna run down and I uh, get stabbed by a spy and then he's gonna taunt because I got stabbed. What? Alright, so you saw that was a good example of a bad angle. Like standing like right at the top of the target and you're like, oh my god, I'm trying to, trying to hit something but I can't because there's hard. It's hard. Um, yes. So one thing uh, that is a bit more advanced for snipers is that a lot of snipers in duels, they scope first, shoot really fast, and then they jump, and then they duck. Uh, and that looks like this, pretty much. So I scope, do the slow scoping here, and looking around, see if I can see anything. Oh, can't hit anything. Alright, missed, that's fine. Keep in mind, as a sniper, you are gonna miss a lot, so bear in mind. And he shoots and misses. Uh, hits me in the body. I couldn't hit him because I didn't see him just there. So here's the thing. Because I'm not. Sure, this is probably mind games. Like he was playing against me. His name is Big Homer. We practice MGE and stuff together, and he's he's pretty good. So he knows that if he makes a mistake, I'm gonna kill him immediately. So probably because he knows it's me, he didn't take the necessary time to adjust his aim and make sure he hit. So instead, he like takes a wild card shot where he just tries to shoot, and it doesn't hit. And he gets hit back. Even if it doesn't kill him, still you didn't hit me. Or, you know, the other sniper. So try to take your time, make sure to land your shots. Because once you start to do that a lot, like I said earlier, the time for when it takes you to aim gets shorter and shorter every time. So you actually get naturally faster without trying to be fast. So the, every time I do that, it's because I think I can actually hit him, and that should be uh, you trying to do that too. Just make sure you land those shots. And even though it takes a while in the beginning, that's fine. That's absolutely fine, because you will get naturally faster uh, reflexes because you will like the classes move the same. People retreat the same way when they take damage. I'm just gonna throw Jurati here, I'm hitting the medic and the soldier. Oh, of course, no one else there. He capitalizes. Oh my God! Crit rockets. Oh my God! All right, running back. All right, so now we're a bit in a wonky spot here because. Um, we're about to running back here. Uh, someone in chat saying that Big Homer, the other sniper on the other team, is a main spy. Yeah, I think so. I think so, but he's a, he's a decent sniper as well. Even though he has the bad habit of scoping first and then using the duck jumping glitch. So you're kind of relying on a game glitch to save you 
for making the mistake first, and that's not really uh, a good thing, so... Take my word for it. If you're absolutely gonna scope and shoot first, just duck. It's, uh, less... Predictable. ...than uh, jumping. So we get a nice kill on the heavy there, just, uh, you know, taking our time, charging up the shots. Because we saw the cart was moving, and we knew someone was on the cart. Didn't know who, but, uh, someone. It was a heavy, easy kill. Here's a bad angle again, really hard, and they're like, fuck, I'm just gonna drop this and kill him with this. Yeah, good. And, uh, people go like, well, that's kind of low. That's not skill. Ugh, that's, like, so disgusting. Ugh. Like, that's not, that's so newbie. That's so newbie of you. But here's the thing. Well, I'm alive. The medic is dead. I killed them. We're done here. So, people get mad. And, like, even if you body shot a lot, that's fine. Getting a dead shot on the, the engineer there. Just keep in mind, it's not important how you kill them, just as long as they die and you kill them somehow. So, I'm oh, seeing Heavy here, he's gonna run forward and die because Heavies are fat, slow, and stupid and Russian. And then we die to a sniper which was there! Oh! Let's rewind, ladies and gentlemen, and look at freeze frames. Hope that thing doesn't crash again, even though uh, people watching this in the archives being like, we're talking about things, are, things, are, things are fine. Just gonna rewind uh, 20 seconds, and we're gonna look at Big Homer's uh, view, what he sees. And this time, he actually takes the time because he knows I'm busy. So this is Big Homer, right here. Uh, this is where he is. He's like here, and I'm like there. So we're gonna see. So he like shoots a demo or something, I think. Ah. Yeah, demo escapes, he jumps. Uh, you can do, ju do the jumps against Demo Man, because then it actually blows away. Just don't do it against snipers, it's kinda dumb. So here, he sees me through the window. Right? He's seen me. He knows I'm here. He knows I'm not paying attention. I do not know he's there. So this time, he actually takes his time and lands the shot and kills me. And that is an excellent execution of how you deal with that. Just... He, like, he knew I wasn't paying attention. He knew that he can just take his time. I wouldn't be able to see him uh, unless I had a suspicion that he was there, which I didn't. And he took the time, didn't shoot too early, and I died because of it, and he survived. And uh, that's pretty good to see. He, he even waved at me. Oh, nice. So, yes. Uh, then we're gonna look at uh, the last replay today, which is, I call, a sentry defense. And it's gonna be a short one. And the thing about, I said, like, a good composition uh, for uh, defense is engineer, sniper, and pyro. It's pretty good. Because uh, snipers and sentry guns work really well together. So we have an engineer here that is... Um, He's doing, he's doing this. So I can actually walk, you know, you can walk through friendly uh, engineers. And there's the thing about the sentry. You cannot shoot through the sentry. However, when it, like, moves back and forth, if you avoid this area here, like, the thing that spins back and forth, you can actually shoot uh, around it. And you, when you don't want to get shot, you can just duck, like I just did there. So that was the plan. All right? So here's the thing. Uh, it did not go as planned, because usually... You can see, like, I, I can't get stabbed. I don't wear the Razorback. The engineer is here, so if a spy tries to stab, I'll know I whip up my Jurati and I kill him. Uh, if he tries to stab me, he will get immediately obliterated by this sentry here, and this other sentry here, and this telespentry right here. And this engineer will kill him too, so it's actually two of us right here. So we're just like, standing around, waiting. He's carrying his teleporter for some reason. I don't know. He has a plan. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to shoot something. I'm not entirely sure what that was. I'm having a pretty good defense here. I'm just standing here. And, all right, let's go and uh, have a have a peek here. Oh, soldier up there. Oh! Keep in mind, if you want to lure people into your, uh, to the enemy sentry gun, be like, you can kind of work like bait. Missing the soldier there, but he dies anyway, and... Oh, there's people on carts. People on carts. Want to shoot the cart. All right, standing behind the sentry gun. Yes, getting the scout there, headshot. Through the, uh, sentry gun thingamajig. There, and... Come on, get the demo. Uh... You see, they're just, they're just moving horizontally, it's easy to hit, but they're still moving pretty fast, so you have to predict it pretty good. And there comes the medic, he's running, and then we died by... what? Alright, so what happened there was that I got killed by Big Homer, and I'm gonna rewind it 10 seconds, and then uh, we're gonna look at it in slow motion from my point of view and see if we can see what happens, alright? So, here, here we are again, uh, behind this uh, sentry gun here. Um, let's slow it down to pretty fucking slow. So here we are, just... Here, it comes the wrangle, and then we scope soon, I think. 
Ah, here comes the medic, right? We remember this. I think we're already in the scope. Yeah, we shoot, and then we die. All right, so that that didn't actually clarify anything. Uh, so I'll actually show you what happened, and this is actually pretty uh, pretty funny. I, I thought it was because oh, he's so good, like like he was good. He saw me and stuff, but that's actually not the case, right? So let's go to Big Homer's view, right? Here he is. Uh, he's on blue. And let's just turn it back for the same stuff up there. You know, I'm not. I don't think he knows I'm behind the center at this point. So let's just just go from here. Goes pyro. Yes, there it goes pyro. And then he just sees a medic, and then he shoots me. But you couldn't see that, right? He, he, he couldn't have seen that, right? He couldn't. He could not have seen that. Because of the way you know the shadows and stuff work, so I, I had to look at this in slow motion the first time in order to see what actually happened. All right, so there you go. Here he is. Gets to the kill on the pyro. That's good. All right, so let's slow it down here. All right, okay, let's slow it down. Slow it down because we can. Yes, good. There he comes. He jumps. Hasn't really seen me because there's been an explosion. He blocks. I'm behind the sentry gun. Very hard to spot. Here's a medic, and he actually tries to twitch shoot the medic. And he shoots through this, he misses the medic barely, and hits like the, uh, Solemn Wow. And if you look at the Solemn Wow, and you go straight ahead, my head is- I was actually right behind, you know, the medic Solemn Wow. And he kills me. And I died, because he missed the medic. So that's gonna sum up the, um... Sniper episode angles. Hopefully you got a big uh, greater idea of how to do the sniping how to position yourself so basically um, How to sum it up is don't give your uh, don't snipe in an area. Don't shoot down Don't don't shoot down, you know unless they have a small, you know square they can move in uh, As you saw it was very hard to do that and Don't leave yourself very open. Uh, try to have your flanks like like this covered Trying to have tunnel vision and try not to stay in one spot for too long. That will get you killed by spies and everything as well. And uh, that's going to sum up that. And next uh, week, I think, because uh, I have exams next week, so it's not going to be a show this Wednesday. But uh, next Saturday, we're going to do, uh, or Sunday, depends. We're going to do uh, the spy episode for all the basic stuff. And since today's episode was about sniper support, of course, and it was about being more uh, patient, taking your time, we're gonna do that with spy too. So uh, the restriction for using the spy set, you have to use the Invisiwatch and the regular knife. You can use whatever pistol you want, even the Enforcer if you're feeling that lame. And basically it will be helping your team push and being patient and getting the right kills. It's not running in and just getting one kill, like you're getting useless kills, it's not interesting, or the amount, or tricky kills. We want good solid kills that has like taken some patience and taking some planning to do which is actually strategically pretty good. Uh, either like successful ones where you like do really good or s horrible ones where you do like absolutely shit and you can't pull off everything, but you tried. So, oh yeah, you can use the kunai too. You can use the kunai, yeah, sorry. You can, you can just don't use the eternal reward pretty much uh, is the thing. So that's gonna sum up uh, that. Uh, next, after the spy episode, we're gonna have a raffle. And the price for the raffle is going to be any kind of set you want. You know the sets that give you bonuses? I'll be giving away one set at a time. So if you win the first raffle, you will have, uh, you can select one out of nine sets. That's the entire set. That's the hat, that's the item and everything. And you will get them for free by me. And how do you enter this raffle, you may ask? Well, just send me, you know, replays of your plays or contribute in any way. And you will be in the raffle. That's how it is. So thank you guys for watching so much and staying through all this horrible lag and stuff like that. So yeah, hat raffle with the bonus set hats, everything, yeah.